My Sterling Single, this is part 21, preparation, filling and painting. And at the moment, as in the last episode, I'm still cleaning up the smoke box. This smoke box looks like it's made from gunmetal castings at the front and rear, with a brass wrapper all the way round it, which also covers the cylinders. It's a bit of a problem knowing what kind of filler to use for this job. Forget car body filler, that will just burn off. Some experts may be saying, well, why not use soft solder, like they do in the automotive industry for vintage cars? Been there, worn the T-shirt, seen the film, read the book. Do not use soft solder. It will just melt and run away. I'm going to use JB Weld. I think this should be OK, but I'll find out in the fullness of time. This engine is quite well built in some places and not so good in others. And for me, the worst problem is probably having to repaint the frames because they are the wrong colour. I mentioned this in the last episode, the fact that the frames are currently in LMS Red and need to be in Great Northern Railway Brown. I'm going to start by removing the grime from the existing paintwork. This stuff is called panel wipe. I think it's really naphtha. The instructions on the tin look a bit scary. May cause heritable genetic carnage. What's that? Well, I know what heritable means, I know what genetic means, and I know what carnage means, but I don't often see those three words in the same sentence. What does this mean? If a father any more children, are they not going to come out right? With, for instance, three legs, two arms, and just one eye in the middle of the forehead? I thought this was the stuff that had been putting in my Zippo cigarette lighter for years. Although I no longer smoke cigarettes, I do find that Zippo cigarette lighters are excellent quality, and ideal for setting fire to things. I poured some of this panel wipe into a suitable container. And first of all, I'm going to use it for cleaning up the old paintwork. You can see how volatile this stuff is. In front of your very eyes, it's evaporating. Although this part of the video is speeded up by a factor of two. But even in real time, you can see it slowly evaporate, or quickly evaporate. Needless to say, you need to wear PPE. And work in a very well-ventilated environment. In my case, I wore eye protection and I opened the door to the shed. Sometimes when I'm painting with dangerous substances, I just hold my breath. But I can't say that I recommend that very highly, because after a while, everything starts to go dark, you feel very strange and fall on the floor. All I'm trying to say is that it's a bad idea to breathe in the vapour from this stuff. After a couple of liberal applications of panel wipe, I cleaned up the area with a cloth. And now, here is a short painting interlude. This is a tin of Phoenix Precision Paints, GNR chocolate brown paint. It needs thoroughly stirring because it's been on the shelf for quite a while. For most of my paint, I use a company called Auto Paint Northern, and one of the services that they provide is putting whatever paint you take them into an aerosol can. I buy Phoenix Precision Paints from Blackgates Engineering, and the man at Auto Paint Northern said that if I sprayed a card with this stuff, he could match it to a paint that they could supply a lot cheaper. So OK, that makes good business sense, but that would mean I would then not be buying any more Phoenix Precision Paints. And it really is such good stuff that I'm quite happy to pay the higher price for the original. Call me old-fashioned, but if everybody did that, then small companies would go out of business. This job is going to be quite tricky. In this clip, I'm painting behind the crosshead. I've cleaned up the paint, given it a light rub down, and use plenty of panel wipe so the surface is quite clean. As usual, I'm using a small brush. That way, the brush leaves scale brush marks. Although, by using Phoenix Precision Paints, I don't find that brush marks are much of a problem because as it dries, the brush marks disappear. And that's all I did for this first workshop session. I let 24 hours elapse, and here I am the next day in the workshop, where I'm mixing some JB Weld. The black stuff is the epoxy resin, and the white stuff is the hardener. I'm going to apply the JB Weld to the smoke box using an old debit card. And in this clip you can see that I spread the JB Weld quite thinly. And in another 24 hours time when I come to rub this down, I will rub away most of it. And here I find myself in the outer part of the workshop, where I'm about to spray some parts using etching primer. These parts are the rear footsteps and they also support the brake shaft. I took these off the engine quite a while ago and removed all of the original paint from them. This auto paint etching primer is really good stuff. 
and in no time at all both of these parts were painted. Before spraying on the top coat though, I need to leave these for 24 hours at least, so that the etching primer is thoroughly dry. When I was painting the chocolate brown paint onto the frames, I did it with the engine on its side. That way there is no chance at all of the paint running or sagging. But in this clip the engine is now back on its feet, and you can see already that the frames look a lot better. I don't know what possessed the builder of this engine to paint the frames of both the engine and the tender red in the first place. It's going to be quite a tricky job painting behind the large driving wheels and it's a big job to remove the drivers with all the motion connected. Back to filling the smoke box. I've turned the engine round so this is now the other side. This, by the way, is 24-hour JB Weld. You can get JB Weld that sets a lot quicker than that. I performed a strength test using JB Weld a while back. I stuck various pieces of metal together, and after allowing 24 hours for the JB Weld to cure, I was very surprised to find out how difficult it was to separate the bonded parts. In this clip, as before, I'm using an old debit card to spread the JB Weld thinly on the smoke box. And that's all I can do for now. This has to be left for 24 hours for the JB Weld to cure. And that's it for another episode. All I have to say is stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.